One of the great passages and books of the Word of God is the book of Romans. And what I would like to do is look uh, slowly through some of the important sections of the book of Romans, doing an analysis of the Greek text grammatically as well as expositionally. When you think of the book of Romans, after the introduction <clears throat> in the first 17 verses, beginning in chapter 1, verse 18, Paul talks about how the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold or suppress the truth in unrighteousness. He goes on to show the universal guilt of the Gentile world in chapter 1. And really, we could say all mankind. He shows that there's been a rejection of him as the creator. Seeing the work of God in creation, instead of worshiping the creator, man has worshiped the creature and made idols. And the same way in the way that they relate to each other, God established at creation uh, a uh, can I say the the what 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 he wants humans to be like in their activity, sexual activity. And so there's been a turning away from all of these areas. And then at the end of chapter one, he goes into a long list of sins, being full of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, full of envy, murder, uh, strife, guile whispering and uh, slandering, hate, hate being hateful, arrogant, proud, haughty, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, uh, covenant breakers, without any kind of compassion, without mercy, who not only know the righteous judgment of God, but affirm the practices of that unrighteousness in those that practice it. So Paul sets forth the universal guilt in chapter one. But then in chapter two of the Gentile world, I should say, he focuses on his Jewish audience, who basically has said, we are proud that we have the Torah. But Paul's whole point is in chapter two, <clears throat> do you keep it? In other words, <clears throat> you may have it, but if you don't do it, then basically it only becomes, uh, can I say, a judgment of you. And so Paul concludes by saying both Jew and Gentile <clears throat> in his book are guilty before the Lord. And the true Jew to Paul is one who has inward circumcision of the heart, not just the outward circumcision alone. So having said that, he then moved into chapter 3 <clears throat> to describe how that there is none righteous, no, not one. And there's a long pearl stringing in chapter 3, verse 9 to 18, <clears throat> showing that everyone is guilty. No one can say, I am righteous before God. Paul quotes a number, a plethora of texts from the Hebrew Bible. Psalm 14, 1 to 3, 53, uh, 1 to 3, Ecclesiastes 7, 20, <clears throat> Psalm 5, 9, Psalm 104, uh, or 140, verse 3, Psalm 10, 7, Isaiah 59, 7 and 8, uh, Proverbs 1, 16, Psalm 26, 1. In other words, <clears throat> he's trying to show from the Hebrew scriptures, from the Torah, that everyone is guilty. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understand, Paul says. There is none who seek God. <clears throat> All have turned aside and become unprofitable. There is none that does kindness, no, not one. Their mouth is an open tomb. <clears throat> with their tongues, they use deception. 
The poisonous, a venomous serpent is under their lips. <coughs> and, excuse me, and their mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Misery and destruction are in their way. And the way of peace have they not known. And there is no fear of God before their eyes. So Paul's describing the universal picture of man's sin. <clears throat> Notice he says, and we know that whatsoever the law says, it speaks to those who are in the law that every mouth might be shut and that all the world might become guilty because out of the works of the law shall no flesh be justified before him. For through the law is the knowledge of sin. So what Paul's proving here in section, this first section of Romans, beginning in chapter 1, verse 18, <clears throat> through chapter 3, verse 20, that everyone is guilty. Everyone is a sinner in God's sight. And everyone has missed the mark. And this is something that we don't like to admit today. We like to say, you know, there is no such thing as sin. But God says there is. And it's important to understand that none of us can stand before God and say, I did it all right. I'm innocent. No, everybody is under <clears throat> God's judgment is what Paul is saying. But the good news is, by the way, this is what I like to call the MRI of hum the human condition that Paul has given. Now he comes, beginning in 321 through chapter 5, to talk about the righteousness that now comes through faith. Remember, Paul's theme is the dikaiosune, the righteousness of God, out of faith, into faith. Ek pistaos eis piston. And with that theme, he's now continuing to show the antidote or what God has done because of the human situation. Notice verse 21. <clears throat> now without law, a dikaiosune theu pefanerotai marturumene hupa tu namu kai ton that is now without the law a righteousness of God that is God's work of righteousness how he is establishing that in the human scene has been manifested notice pepanerotai is from fanerao which is a perfect indicative passive uh, third person a singular from fanerao. So the righteousness of God has been manifested. Notice the reduplication of the he, uh, the pi and the epsilon uh, before the uh, phi here. So the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed. Notice the Greek says marturumene. Being witnessed is a present participle passive, nominative, uh, feminine, singular from martureo. It's connected with dikaiosune. So the righteousness of God has been revealed, being witnessed, hupatu namu, by the law. Notice the law is the means and the prophets, tone, prafe, tone. So the Hebrew scriptures, Paul is saying, show, that is the Torah and the Nevi'im. The law and the prophets are showing the dikaiosune of God, the righteousness of God. The work of God in bringing, can I say, victory and deliverance to the human scene. And then we go to 22. Dikaiosune de theu dia pistaos Jesu Christu, eis pantas tus pistuantas, ugar esten diastale. That is, even a righteousness of God through faith. Notice the agency of receiving that righteousness, Paul says, is dia pistos. Notice the dia is taking the genitive here, showing the instrument. So the instrumentality 
of receiving that righteousness is through faith in Jesus Christ unto all who are, who are believing. Notice, eis pantas, tus pistuantas. Pistuantas is a participle, a present active participle, accusative singular from pistuo. So it becomes effective, that is the righteousness of God through faith, and it comes to all who are willing to believe in the work that God has done in Christ. And notice Paul goes on to say, for there is no distinction. Uh, Ugar esten diastale. That is, both Jew and Gentile are now having to accept that need of righteousness in Jesus Christ through faith, is Paul's argument. Uh, everybody has to. And so if, they, if they're going to experience it, is Paul's point. Then notice in verse 23, Pantes garchematan kai kai teis doxes tu theu. For all have sin. Chematan is from chematano to sin. It is the aorist indicative active, a third person plural from chematano. So all have sin and are falling short. Notice chustaruntai is from and all, each one of them, every human being is falling short. Uh, <clears throat> this is an, uh, they are falling short. Uh, this is a, a middle, as I'm understanding it, a present middle indicative, third person plural from hustareo. That is all are falling short. Teis doxes to theu of the glory of God. And then Paul continues in verse 24. De kaiumenoi dorean teatu karati diates apalutrosaos teis in Christo Jesu. Being justified freely by his grace. Notice de kaiumenoi is a present uh, participle, a present passive participle. A nominative masculine plural from dikai ao. So being justified freely, here's the adverb showing that it's not by any works that we do, but it's a free acquittal. Justification means divine pardon. And Paul is seeing God as the prosecuting attorney, attorney, so to speak, and saying, look, there is an answer. That is, you can be acquitted. Uh, if you believe in what I have done. So being acquitted or justified, Paul says, by his grace, te tu karati. Now we have the means. Uh, we saw the instrument, which is faith. The means is by his grace. It's a dative of me means, in my understanding. In other words, being justified freely by his grace. Grace is unmerited favor. So it's not anything that we earn. It's simply his grace, his unmerited gift to us. And this comes then through the channel of the ates apalutrosos, through the redemption, tes in Christo Jesu, which is in uh, Christ Jesus. By the way, dia again takes the genitive and it is followed in apalutrosaos, which is from apalutrosis. It's a genitive singular <clears throat> form. And notice apalutrosis is a very interesting word. Uh, if a slave in the first century wanted to buy his freedom, he could lay a certain amount of money aside, which was called apalutrosis money, and that would buy his freedom from slavery. And I think what Paul's saying is, we have been acquitted by grace through one who has bought our freedom from the bondage of sin and from the judgment of God. And so it's through the redemption, the price that was paid and the deliverance affected as a result, which is in Christ Jesus. Notice uh, in Christo is where it's at. In, by the way, takes the dative of location Everything to Paul 
is in Christo. It's in Christ Jesus where this justification occurs. Paul goes on <clears throat> in verse 25 then to say, Chan as helasterion pistaos into auto chaimati es indexen tes decayasunes autu diaten parasenton pragegananton armartematon armartematon notice <clears throat> which God has placed a hilasterio uh, whom God has placed notice Han is a relative pronoun uh, taking uh, in the accusative uh, going with Jesus Christ. So whom God placed, praetheta is from pratithemi, uh, it is the aorist indicative middle, uh, third person singular from pratithemi, whom God has placed, uh, in other words, placed in advance and or placed before all to see. I think the pratithemi means to place before and it could look both in both directions before time <clears throat> and then uh, on the cross before all to see it is interesting that god had already placed christ as the means of atonement from before the foundation of the world we are told in ephesians chapter one that believers who believe in jesus were chosen before the laying down of the world. And also it was a public display of what had happened in that covenantal relationship, I believe, between the Father and the Son from all eternity. And so Jesus carries that out, I believe Paul is saying, whom God placed, and this is God's work, placed Jesus as a hilasterion through faith in his blood. That word hilasterion it's very interesting. It is in the Septuagint, a translation of the Hebrew kafaret. Kafaret is the lid in the Holy of Holies, where blood was sprinkled on Yom Kippur, on the Day of Atonement. And in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures around 200 BC, it's hilasterion that translates that word. And I think what Paul's saying, in my understanding, <laughs> is that as the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and would sprinkle blood on the kafad, which can be translated seat of covering or mercy seat. That was the hilasterion in the Greek translation of it. Paul's thinking <clears throat> about the blood of Christ uh, illustrated by the blood on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement that was sprinkled in the Holy of Holies <clears throat> and uh, took away the sins of the Israelite nation for a year. The good news is Christ has now accomplished it forever, once for all. And Paul's thinking, that is, God has placed Christ, the Hilasterion, through faith in his blood. Notice, in order to have that covering, by the way, the word looks, I think, at a double meaning, Hilasterion, going back to Kephater. The blood covered the mercy seat, looking at sins, can I say, uh, being satisfied. God is satisfied that he no longer is holding uh, uh, those uh, guilty. The nation now has had a satisfaction for a year, historically, looking at Leviticus 16. But then I think what Paul's saying is, God has satisfied for all time through the sacrifice of Christ for the sins of the world. And so this could be translated propitiation, which is a big word that just means satisfaction. And it could also be translated expiation. I think, I think you have to have propitiation followed by expiation. That is expiation looks at the removal because if sins are covered, then God no longer sees them, they are removed. So I've often called this word a pregnant word. <clears throat> I think it's pregnant with meaning. God is satisfied. Uh, he, can I say, is propitiated, which clearly, helasterion, I believe, has that meaning from helaskamai, 
the Greek uh, meaning to satisfy uh, in, his, in classical Greek, it had to do with satisfying a God. Here it's satisfying God's justice, I believe Paul's saying, and it's through faith. And then it's also removed <clears throat> because when the blood was sprinkled, God no longer saw it uh, for that year. And thank God now it's eternal. Christ has covered and taken away. He has propitiated. He has expiated once for all the sins of mankind if one is willing to believe. But it has to come through faith in his blood, Paul is saying. In other words, one receives this, the ates pistaos into into auto chaimati. That is, it comes not through works, but through faith, through accepting what the Lord has done in his blood. We can't get away from the blood atonement of Christ. Without the shedding of blood, we're told there's no remission of sins. And so Jesus Christ came and paid the price as the God-man, Paul's saying, and it's in his blood then that we have this hilasterion, this redemption, this, can I say, propitiation and uh, removal of sins. And then Paul goes on to say, unto ace indexentes dikaius dikai, uh, dikaiosunes autu, that is, unto a demonstration of his righteousness on account of the passing over, the attain partisan ton prage gananton, on account of the passing over of sins having been done or committed before. Uh, by the way, this is a perfect passive participle genitive uh, plural uh, here. And so he's looking at sins that were done in, can I say, Old Testament times. That is what Paul is saying, I believe, in the forbearance of God, uh, well, before I get to that, uh, through his righteousness on account of what seemed to be the passing over of sins having been done in the past. In other words, the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sins, but Jesus did. And by the way, the verb here in this perfect, uh, it's a perfect active participle, I'm sorry, uh, is from uh, pra genomai, to happen beforehand. In other words, the sins that happened beforehand, uh, what Paul is saying, the Lord has removed and given a demonstration that he always had removed it through that eternal sacrifice of Christ. We're told in, uh, for example, that Christ was a lamb slain before the foundation of the world in the book of Revelation. And I believe that the book of Ephesians emphasizes that, that we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world. So sins having been uh, committed in the past, uh, now we know that they were always covered by the sacrifice of Christ in that covenantal relationship between the Father and the Son from all eternity that was displayed in time when Christ died. And so he says, in the forbearance of God for a demonstration of his righteousness in the now time. In other words, it looked like God was forbearing and uh, he was doing that because of that kind of final sacrifice that Christ would make and that eternal promise between the Father and the Son. And he goes on to say, in the forbearance of God for a demonstration that is for a demonstration of his righteousness in the now time. In other words, God has now once for all demonstrated his righteousness that it was always through that covenantal relationship between the father and the son. Now realize on Calvary that, that God is taking away the sins of the, even of the, what, all the sins that were covered on the Day of Atonement through what Christ has accomplished. And that covers us today in that eternal Day of Atonement on the cross. And so Paul goes on 
in the forbearance of God for a demonstration of his righteousness in the present time that he might be just. That is, with the result in the present time now, that he might be just. Notice, uh, ta enai is an infinitive <clears throat> uh, from emi to be. So the result is that he might be just. And notice, altan is an accusative of general reference, to be just with reference to him. And yet it becomes the subject of this inf infinitive clause, that he might be just and de kaunta, the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. By the way, de kaunta is from de kaao. It's the present active participle accus accusative singular from de kaao, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one ek pista osiesu out of faith in Jesus. So what I see Paul saying is now righteousness has come. It's through Jesus Christ that we see God's deliverance, that we see how he is just and how he is the justifier of those who are willing to come through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul's strong emphasis is that faith is what acquits, the faith in what Christ has accomplished in that hilasterion, that propitiation and satisfaction that place of atonement which Christ has carried out. The prophets witnessed it, anticipated it. It was carried out in time when Christ died, fulfilling that eternal covenantal relationship that, that, that we believe was established between the Father and the Son from all eternity and now realized in history. And so the most important thing we can do today is to put our faith <clears throat> in Jesus Christ alone and his atoning work. It's essential to believe that, Paul is saying, in order to have divine pardon and no longer be facing what Paul describes in 118, uh, the judgment of God. So what a beautiful, can I say, a solution for uh, our human situation. And that is what Jesus Christ has accomplished in his atoning work. May we put our faith in him as the source of our justification.